Hey guys, this is Dr. Klein with my co-host, Dr. Phil over here. Um, so today we're closed, but we are seeing emergency patients. So let's talk about 10 out of 10 pain, because people have different definitions of what 10 out of 10 pain is, because that's one of the criteria. If you're in severe pain, you're about to go into the ER. We're seeing about 9 to 10 out of 10 pain. Um, for me, that's the most pain I've ever been in. So shattering my heels, that'd be 10 out of 10 pain. Uh, having shingles in the base of my skull, 10 out of 10 pain. If you're about to go to the ER, maybe call us. We can maybe sneak you in, but there's some strict criteria. And it's not just walk in, okay? It's call, set up an appointment. So just because the governor shut us down, we gotta be really strict about it. Otherwise, Dr. Phil and I are going to be going over some foundation training. Phil, uh, what are you doing over here? Uh, Phil created a playlist for us go on Facebook under videos. Uh, there's Understanding Anchoring the Hips, the, the three videos we did last week. So if you're in pain, if you call me, I'm probably going to say the two words you hate the most, which is foundation training. So check out that playlist, watch those three videos in order, because we're going to do a review of that material right now. So what is anchoring? Well, if you want to know what anchoring is, watch those last two videos, because I'm not going to repeat myself, because we've already beat that horse. But essentially, it's pulling the hips into the socket. So I'm going to give you another little tip I use for that sometimes. And that's a circle band. If you don't have a circle band, you can take a TheraBand and tie it into a circle. And we're going to put it right below the knees while we're doing foundation training. So you think about it, and this applies to the arms too, because we'll get into that next video. That's probably my next video is anchor the arms. It's just easier to show. So as I, I keep the length of my spine, I open up. It actually, you'll feel this pull into the socket. We don't want to extend when we open, right? Because then it's not pulling into the socket. It's keeping that length, not leaning back. Then we open up, engages. Again, we open up, pushes it into the socket. Same thing with the hips. If we, this is below the knees, because that's analogous to below the elbows. If we do the same thing there, it's going to press it into the socket. So we're going to do this little review video. Um, and then we're, we're going to put it up below the knees for this one. Don't put it below the elbows. The next video will do that. We'll think about the anchoring of the shoulders, which is something we really haven't talked about yet. Because the hips are more important. If we can train our hips right, support our spine, then the shoulders will follow. A lot of us, we focus on our neck and shoulders first. When the hip is kind of quiet, we don't listen to that enough. We get our foundation right, because resisting gravity works from ground up. All right, I'll be quiet, and we'll let this video play here. Get Phil here out of the way. Probably gonna be really loud. It's time to add a little bit of hinging, some deeper hinging into this practice here. You're gonna keep practicing decompression. That's gonna be a part of every exercise you do in foundation training. But I have to teach you how to elongate and tension and tone the posterior chain. So we're gonna practice that just a little bit now. Let's start with some wide founders. Really practicing that hip hinge, pulling back and counterbalancing with the arms moving forward. We'll start. Really simple, chest high, thumbs at the base of the rib cage, pinkies at the pelvis, and just like the decompression, we're just lifting. Everything's coming up and wide. As you exhale, you tighten up your belly, and on the second inhale, breathe as deep as you can. We're gonna open up the shoulders as we pull the hips back into a hinge. As the hips go back, the knees have to unlock just a little bit. Your weight's back in the heels, your backside of your body is engaging. Now the lower back is getting tired already. The hamstrings are starting to feel like they're being stretched on. We're gonna take the arms forward, and as we do that, the hips are going to pull back, lengthening the torso even further, as if the hands and hips are playing tug of war, pulling against each other. We're gonna to go to the feet for a second. Every toe, from the big toe to the pinky toe, is going to press down into the ground. Feel that contact, feel that go up the leg, toning the leg just a little bit differently, and then pull the hips another half inch to an inch deeper. 10 more seconds right here. Big deep breath along the back of the rib cage, big. As you exhale, reach a little further. One more, big deep breath all the way in. As you exhale this time, let's bring the arms back, bring the hips forward, stand up, and we're gonna bring the feet all the way together. We're gonna practice a basic standing decompression after that hinge, after that founder. So the toes are touching, especially the balls of the big toe are really trying to touch. The heels are separated an inch and you're standing as tall as you can, as if somebody's pulling from right here at the back of your skull, lifting. We're going to go right into those measuring hands, thumbs at the base of the rib cage, pinkies at the pelvis, elongate. We're going to go right here, breathing as heavily as possible into the back lobes of the rib cage, the back area, the lower lobes of the lungs. One more big breath. 
Perfect. Let's open up the arms, bring them all the way up. And as the arms go up, so in the founder, we hinge really far. In the standing decompression, it's like an inch or two, just unlocking that hip joint by pulling the weight backwards, loading the posterior chain. Everything else reaches up. We don't want Erin taking her arms all the way back behind her head. We want to stay forward of the chin so that she can pull the chin and widen the lats. One more deep breath. Let the arms come down. Shake that off. Exact same thing one more time through. Wide leg founder. Go a little wider, maybe two, three inches wider than the last one, and make sure the outsides of those feet are parallel. All right? Chest up. Measuring hands there. Thumbs at the rib cage, pinkies at the pelvis. Plant the feet into the ground, right from the get-go here. Just dig them into the ground, and then we're gonna pull the hips back. Good, perfect, perfect. Make sure those hips are actively pulling behind your heels. You're not just bending at the hip joint, taking your weight forward. Pull your weight back, reach the arms forward, and we're gonna go counterbalance. Hands and hips pulling away from each other as far as they possibly can in that position. And you're just gonna suffer for about 10 more seconds here. Try to calm down your breathing. Lift the arms, make your body work as hard as it can, but calm down your breathing. Good. One more full breath, all the way in. Inflate the back of the lungs, pull the chin back. As you exhale, bring the arms back, hips come forward, perfect. Shake that off, one more standing decompression. Toes touching, heels separated, stand tall, as tall as you possibly can. Make sure that chin pulls back. Notice those neck muscles at the front of Aaron's neck here. You want those to be engaging, lifting the sternum up. Good. Start to pull the hips back just a little bit. We'll open up the arms, and we're going to take the arms forward and up as high as they can go, but not pressing back behind your neck. Make sure the back of your neck stays long here. Good. Tighten up the abdomen. Breathe big, 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 lifting the rib cage, broadening the back of the torso. And every time you exhale, that abdomen just tightens, all right? You're pulling the two ends of the spine away from each other, the head and the tailbone. And as that happens, the center has to really tighten in on itself. One more breath. And then rest, shake it off. And this is for you too, rest, shake it off. Let your body completely relax for about five, 10 seconds here. Cool? Okay. So let's get into a woodpecker position. Right leg forward, left leg back. Make sure that the feet are facing the same direction. They don't have to be in the same line like you're on a balance board but they do have to be facing the same direction so that the hip joints are square and facing forward, all right? Subtle bend in the front knee, perfect. Now to start this, we have our weight even, but we're gonna take our weight all the way forward into that front heel as we hinge the hip on that front leg. That's what makes the woodpecker exercise strong, loading the posterior chain on that front leg. Front knee is bent, but it's not traveling forward, and the arms are gonna open straight up in front of you, perfect. We're trying to keep your spine long here. From the tailbone to the top of the head is as long as it can be, and we're gonna go three forceful deep breaths, just like basic decompression breathing. Widening the rib cage, tightening the abdomen on the exhale. Good, one more. Tighten the abdomen, reach the arms just a little higher, and really leverage that lower back for just a moment. All of the weight is forward on that right heel on the front leg, and when she brings those arms up, it makes the lower back burn harder by a lot on that right side. Make sure you can feel that. Let the arms come down. And let's go ahead and lift the arms straight up with the chest coming straight up. So no longer a woodpecker. We're going to come out of that hinge and we're going to go straight into a lunge decompression, reaching up as high as we can. Chin pulls back. Perfect. Now, we're not all the way forward on that front leg anymore. So we're looking for that 50-50 front to back leg weight ratio. 50% on the front, 50% on the back. And then we're lifting our torso as high as we can. And it feels like our legs are squeezing at each other because we're lifting so high. Five more seconds in this position. Big deep breath. Nice, very nice. Let the arms come down, shake that off. Left leg forward, right leg back. We're gonna start again with that woodpecker position. So again, the legs are lined up facing forward with the hips square. They don't have to be on a balance beam though. They can be wider, that's fine. They just have to be squared. Good, the weight shifts forward into that front leg. The spine is tight and long, and then those arms are gonna reach forward. As the arms reach forward, we get a lot of tone and tension and, and contraction on that posterior chain, especially the lower back on the front leg. Take your weight forward just a little bit more. Lift the arms a little higher, and let's really concentrate that force. And we'll go two more deep breaths here, and we're looking for a lot of heavy tone, heavy contraction on the left side of the body here, 
Okay? Good. One more breath. Let the arms open. Bring the chest back up over the hips. We're going into a lunge decompression now. We're going to take the arms straight up. Reach as high as you can. And again, the elbows don't go back behind the ears or back behind the head. Don't get into that weird position. Reach up as high as you can. So yeah, show them that again for just a second. When those elbows come back, that's no longer shoulder range of motion. That comes from here. All right, so keep the front of the body tight. Reach the arms up and pull the chin back. And use this to stabilize and widen the torso. One more breath. Good. Let the arms come down. Shake that off for a moment. Let your legs relax, and we're going to get into woodpecker hinges now. So we're going to go back to the right foot forward. This time we're going to add motion to that posterior chain loading on the front leg. So we're going to start really decompress. Let's take a moment and actually decompress before we get into this. Everybody take two to three deep breaths, paying attention to the length of the torso. Once you've done those two to, those two to three breaths, I want you to lift up even bigger and then hinge into that woodpecker. So right away, the right hamstring, right butt muscle, and right lower back talking to you. They're letting you know that they're working. We can go to two options here. We can take the arms back like this, like a chicken wing, or we can reach the arms forward. What I would suggest here is this one, the chicken wing. Let's open up the chest as big as we can and really open up the palms as we create simple hip motion at that front leg. All of the movement comes across this hip axle. There's no other movement in the body. As the hip pulls back, the chest goes forward. Keep repeating this. We'll say six, eight, ten repetitions over and over and over. One of the most important movement patterns you can practice in the human body is one leg at a time being able to support the torso. Perfect. Come on up. Shake that off. And let's go ahead and switch legs. Left leg forward, right leg back. Big stance. Decompress big before you get into that woodpecker hinge. Okay? So the rib cage lifts away. As you hinge, as that hip pulls back, the rib cage is still actively pulling away from the pelvis. Big deep breath into the back of the ribs. Go into that nice little chicken wing looking stance. And we'll hinge from the left hip joint. Loading and then contracting. So stretching and contracting the left posterior chain. Finding that integrated motion that lifts the torso as a result of the contraction that happens on the back side of the body. That's what you're trying to find on every single one of these. Let's go two more. One more. Once you come up, big decompression, shake it off and relax. Good, very, very nice. Okay, so we're gonna get into wide stance again. We did the hinges on the one leg, did the hinges on the other leg. Now we're gonna do both legs in that founder position. We're just gonna practice the most basic human position there is, which is a basic double-sided hip hinge, all right? The hips pull back as the arms reach forward, and we're gonna go for 10 counterbalances here. Hips pulling back, arms reaching forward. 10 times here, practicing that simple counterbalance of the hips and butt muscles moving back, pulling behind you as the arms have to reach up and forward to counterbalance the weight. It's keeping your center of gravity at the center of you. All right, let's go three more. Good. Perfect, and then go ahead and stand up after that one. Shake that off. And let's bring your feet a little closer together. We're gonna to do one more round of the, wood, of the founder hinges, but I wanna do it maybe two feet to two, maybe three feet apart, all right? You can do these from any stance, really. You just have to make sure that your hips are square. Let's go another eight to 10 hinges here in this position. Chest up, hips generate the motion. Hips generate the motion, that's where it all starts. It's that backward pull that loads the posterior chain. Good, you should be getting pretty fatigued by this point. Try to get through these slowly, try to keep your spine as long as you can and keep all of the sensation, all of the muscular contraction that you feel along the back side of your body here if you can, all right? And then the last exercise we're gonna do here to practice is a standing decompression. We're just going to tie everything together and really pull the body as long as we can to finish this workout. So the toes touch, the heels are separated, chin back, and we'll go super textbook here. Thumbs at the base of the rib cage, pinkies at the pelvis, chin pulls back. Pay a clip, you know, super close attention, even to these details, even to the small stuff. It's not that small. All right, let's break the hips, pull them back just a little bit right there, just to get that hinge, and then we're gonna open up the arms, spread the palms, spread the wrists, use the elbows to open the chest here. And then we'll take the arms up, reach up nice and high, squeeze the knees in, lift up big. We're gonna go three slow breaths. Five seconds in, five seconds out, 
Expand the rib cage, front, back, and sides. Contract the abdomen. Expand the rib cage. Perfect, contract the abdomen. When you're done breathing like that, you can let your arms come down, shake your shoulders out, take a few steps, practice this workout a lot. Got a lot more to teach you though, a ton more. So where should we be feeling this? If you remember the last videos, Phil? Well, that's where I'm feeling anyways. You're gonna feel it all over, but for sure you wanna feel it in these serratus muscles. So kinda of here in the shoulder area in through there where these V muscles attach. Um, should not be feeling it in the low back. Should not be feeling it here. Shouldn't be painful. Um, the band just helps get the hips into the socket. Would a rib out constitute as emergency? Probably not. The governor's orders didn't really make much sense. It was like, if you have a metastasis, it's gonna spread or a loss of limb. It's like, you didn't, yeah, I don't think he really understands what chiropractors do. So we're trying to get more clarification on that. But if it's like 10 out of 10 pain, there's some sort of sciatica, radiculopathy. If you're about to go to the emergency room, give us a call. No promises, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, hopefully that video helped. Questions? Go ahead. Let me know. Otherwise, check out that playlist on anchoring. That was just a review of everything we went over last week. But the band... Good idea, definitely helps. You notice I had to push it down a little bit lower on my calves, that seemed to work better than kind of right below the knees, and I think that's the same way I'll do it in the arms. It's not that close to the elbow, a little bit more mid-shaft, if you will. So the next video will be going over how to anchor the shoulders. Same idea as the hips, just using the band on the shoulders. If you're crazy, you could use them both <laughs> on, on your knees and then on your on your arms at the same time. That'd be terrible. And that's not the goal. It's, it's not just to make it harder. It's just to make you understand the idea of using that isolated shoulder hip motion that we keep talking about. That's what anchoring is. Isolating the motion of the shoulder, not using your spine and shoulder blade to do the motion, but the glenohumeral joint itself. Watch those other videos. Leave me some questions. Have a good day, Ginger.